Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Today the subject of my lecture is use of ni neither and either and some other things as well. First of all, as we were also discussing this in the class when we were taking the classes on the campus, that neither means not one and not the other, right? It takes an affirmative singular verb and it can be used by itself or followed by a noun or, or by of plus the, these, those, possessive or personal pronouns. First use is it does mean not one and not the other. And the second thing is it takes an affirmative singular verb. All right. It will, uh, it will, it will usually take these affirmative and singular verbs. For example, I fried both keys, but neither of them worked. All right. Here you can see that neither takes a uh, single uh, affirmative singular verb, right? I fried both keys, but neither of them worked. You are referring to one of them, right? You are not referring to both of them. Next is neither of them knew the way or neither boy knew blah, blah, blah. All right. So here again, it is being used as an affirmative and singular verb. So you can say that it can also be it can be used by uh, itself or it can also be used like this uh, by a noun or, or by of plus da, di, those, etc. We will see some more examples in the next slides as well. And uh, option number C is I have read neither of these books. You can see the structure here. Neither of these of plus these this one this structure of plus da, these, those, etc. So neither of these, the structure, this structure is being used here. <coughs> In this slide, we see that either means any one of the two. All right. Neither means not one and not the other, whereas either means any one of two. It takes a singular verb and like neither can be used by itself or followed by a noun or pronoun or by of plus the these those etc next use either plus negative verb can replace neither plus affirmative except when neither is the subject of a verb right so this either plus negative verb it can replace neither plus affirmative so this can replace neither plus affirmative you can say that this either plus negative can be used instead of neither plus uh, affirmative. Except, of course, except not in that case when neither is the subject of a verb. So either could not be used in A or B above, but could be used in C. For example, here in first two examples, I have both keys, etc neither of them neither of them knew so we cannot use either here but we can use uh, either here here in the, in the in third example i have read uh, either of these but we cannot use either here instead of neither right i fried both keys but either of them work we cannot use either here we cannot use either here but we can use either here why because either plus negative verb can replace neither plus affirmative right you can find the example for this case here. I haven't read either of these books, right? This negative, this either plus negative can replace neither plus affirmative, right? You can also use neither here. I haven't read either of these books or I haven't read uh, either of these books. Now this Either cannot be subject of a negative verb, it can be subject or object of an affirmative or interrogative verb, right? You can say that this either uh, cannot be subject of a negative verb. If you, you are using a negative verb, you cannot use either as a subject. However, it can be subject or object of an affirmative or interrogative verb. For example, either of these would do the, this is affirmative sentence and you can use either as subject. Would you like either of these here this sentence is interrogative and you can use either here as well in next slide we will study pronouns and possessive adjectives with neither and either pronoun and possessive adjectives 
with neither either with neither and either used of people should technically be he him she her his her but in colloquial english the plural forms are generally used for example if you are if you want to use pronouns and possessive adjectives instead of using either and neither you will always use he or him and her for she and 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 his or her etc you will not use plural uh, for them right you will not use plural nouns and um, pronouns or plural uh, possessive adjective for them but you will you can only use those plural in colloquial english and if colloquial english mein aap use kar sakte hain baaki aap unke liye hamesha he him she her his her wagaira likhenge colloquial does mean conversational english which is not very formal which is informal right which is not standard english for example here neither of them knows the way do they yahan pe you you are using do they you are not using her or she or, she, or him or his etc you are using they uh, uh, plural 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 uh, pronoun but this is not this is not uh, in the case of this cannot be used in the case of standard formal english right you can only use this in in colloquial or daily conversational language in chats in conversations not in formal english right in formal english you will use he or him she uh, her his or etc for neither and either <coughs> in the next case neither dot 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 does mean something in between this right you can write something here in in in, in the by replacing these dots neither dot 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 nor or either then blah 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 or etc neither nor plus affirmative verb is an emphatic way of combining two negatives right you can you you can combine two negatives it's an emphatic way of combining two negatives by using this neither nor plus affirmative structure for example in example number a neither threats nor arguments had any effect on him right you can combine to to neither and nor or either or or all right you will either use this neither and nor and you can use either or or neither threats nor arguments in example number b they said the room was large and bright uh well uh, large and bright but it was neither large nor bright in example number c uh, you can also see the same structure being used in next slide we will study either dot dot or or cannot cannot be the subject of a negative verb right you cannot use either and or as the subject of a negative verb so either or or cannot be the subject of a verb but can be the subject or object of affirmative or interrogative verbs and is used in this way to express alternatives emphatically right so this either or cannot be the subject of a negative verb but it can be the subject or object of a affirmative or of a of interrogative verbs for example here you can have either soup or fruit juice all right this is uh, um, it does mean you cannot have both you cannot have both soup or fruit combined or collectively right you can have either soup or fruit in the next example you can see you must either go at once or wait till tomorrow third it is urgent so could you either phone or telex so here in three examples we cannot see uh, either or as a subject of a negative verb but it can be seen as a subject and or object of affirmative or or, or, or interrogative in third example uh, in third example right uh, it can be seen as subject or it can be seen as object of a uh of an affirmative or interrogative verb <clears throat> in th in next slide we will uh, go through some any no and none adjectives and pronouns right these some any no and none are adjectives or pronouns and we will we will we will go we will go through the use of these some any no and none as adjectives and pronouns some and any mean a certain number or amount they are used with or instead of plural or uncountable nouns right you will always use them with 
with plural or uncountable nouns or you will use them instead of plural or uncountable nouns. Some is a possible plural form of a, an, and one. You can use some instead of using a, an, one. For example, have a biscuit. Some biscuits, you can use both structures. Instead of using have a biscuit, you can say have some biscuits. And same is the case with second example. <clears throat> some, any, and none can be used with of plus da, the, these, the, those, da, etc. possessive or personal pronouns. You can also use this some uh, in this structure. Uh, like that, you can, some can also be used with, with structure like of plus da, this, these, those, etc. For example, here, some of the staff can speak Japanese. Did anyone, a few of photos come out well, right? You can use this structure with some or any, etc. You can also see some more examples for some. Some is used with affirmative verbs. For example, affirmative, this is affirmative example, they brought some honey. Some can also be used in questions where the answer is just as expected, right? You can use them with such questions where you will expect yes as an answer. Did some of you sleep on the floor? I expect so. Yani, it does mean you, your answer would most probably be yes, right? It can also be used with offers and, and requests. Would you like some wine? Could you do some type for some typing for me? Right? It can also be used with requests and offers. And any is used with, with negative verbs, mostly with negative verb. Here you can see that I haven't any matches. With hardly, barely, scarcely which are almost negatives, right? Hardly, barely, scarcely are almost negative uh, adverbs. I have hardly any spare time. You can use any, first of all, with negative verbs, or you can also use any with hardly, barely, scarcely. They, are, they, they too are almost negative. I have hardly any spare, spare, spare time without when or, or, or when without any is equal to without with no you can also use any with this structure as well right without when uh, with without when or without any or you can say with no as well he crossed the the uh, he crossed the rent here uh, actually there is an exam there is, should be a mistake here it should be like he crossed the frontier right instead of writing rentier it should be frontier he crossed the frontier without any difficulty or you can also say he crossed the frontier with no difficulty so you can use without any difficulty and you can also say with no difficulty any one of these two and in the next case it any can be used with questions except the types noted above so you cannot use always you cannot always use with example with questions which we have already discussed about right have you got any money? Did you catch any fish? So you can say that it can also be used um, with questions sometimes. And in the next case, after if or whether and in expressions of doubt, you can also use any with if, after if or whether, or you can also use it in expressions of doubt. If you need any more money, please let me know. Here you are not sure whether somebody needs any more money or not you are in, in 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 state of doubt you are expressing or revealing some sort of doubt so you are using any here right if you need any more money please let me know i don't think there is any protocol in the tank right so here again you are not sure whether uh, whether there is any petrol in the tank or not right you are in state of doubt again In next example, we will see, uh, in next slide we are going to study no as adjective and none as pronoun. No and none can be used with affirmative verbs to express a negative. I have no apples. You are using them with affirmative verbs, right? You are not using them with negative verbs. L yet it will give us expression, uh, it will give us a, a negative expression, right? I have no apples, that means I have no apples at all. I had some last year, but I have none this year. So you can use no and none in this way. No plus uh, this uh, noun.
can be the subject of a sentence. No work was done. No left is arrived. So no plus noun can be the subject of a sentence. Otherwise, no cannot be the subject, but no plus noun can be the subject of a sentence as well. None as the subject is possible, but not very usual. We expected let letters, but none came. Here, none is used as a subject, but it's not very, very usual or formal, right? We can use none as subject. We, we cannot use no as subject, but we can use no plus noun as subject, right? And he, here, however, none can be used as subject. We say, but none came. None is subject here, but it's not very usual in English. None plus of, however, is quite usual as a subject. However, none plus of can be the subject. Here, none plus noun can be subject. Here, none is the subject. And here, none plus of is the subject. None plus, uh, none plus of is used with some other noun, of course. None of the tourists wanted to climb the mountain. Last slide for today's lecture. Some or any used with singular or countable nouns. So they can also be used with singular and countable nouns. First, we went through those uses which were which were specifically for uncountable and, and plural nouns. Now we are going to see singular and countable nouns, which are being used with some and any. Some here usually means an unspecified or unknown, right? So here, when you are using some with singular and countable noun, it usually means an unspecified or unknown. You are not sure about something or someone. Some idiot parked his car outside my garage. So here you do not know who is the idiot, right? You are saying some idiot because you are not, you cannot specify. You do not know the person. Next use, our other can be added to emphasize that the speaker isn't very interested. So you can also add something to tell that the speaker is not very interested. For example, he doesn't believe in conventional medicine. He has some remedy or other of his own. Here you are adding or other, right? Or other. You, you, you add this to emphasize that speaker is not very interested in this thing. He doesn't believe in conventional medicine. He has some remedy. It's all right till here or other of his own. It does mean the speaker is not very interested in, in the thing which is being said over here. Last use, any can mean particularly every, no particular one, right? So any can mean particularly every, not particular one. You see, it's not referred to, to, to a definite or a particular one, right? It refers to everything, it anything. Any book about riding will tell you how to saddle a horse. Any dictionary will give you the meaning of these words, right? So here you are not referring to a particular thing, right? It refers to any, practically everything. Thank you very much for listening. If you still have any question, please do ask me in the comments below, or you can ask me in the WhatsApp group or in the, in, in, in the box as well. Thank you so much.